Hello, I'm Detective Lux. And Detective Ember. And these two gumshoe are ready to talk about something we watched. Called? Blossom Detective Holmes in Selfie with a Strange Intruder. So, this is a six-minute pilot episode. Uh, we've linked to it and its Kickstarter campaign below. So, yeah, go watch it and then come back and we can talk about it. Okay, so, yeah, we've never really talked about something that's on Kickstarter before. This campaign is live, and at the time of this recording, which is obviously different than the posting date of the recording, they have met their basic goal for creating the second episode. Yep, and this will go up before the end of the Kickstarter, so if you want to go to it and still get in on it, there will be time. They are offering a lot of rewards on a lot of different tiers. We're not necessarily endorsing them. We just like what we've seen. And that's why we want to talk about it. Because we like what we've seen. And this is the director from Korra and Voltron Legendary Defender. Hmm. Both of which we like. So go figure. Yeah, apparently this is a passion project of his. So that's nice. And the team he put together did a really nice job on that seven, well, six minutes. Six, seven minutes, depending on counting the outro credits. It's really well done, and they knew what they could do. You could tell by the way they did the angles on the cameras, the composition. They put their budget where it was needed to really give a good sense of action for this quick six-minute short. That gives you all the basics of what's going on here. I mean, the name kind of gives it away. Blossom Detective Holmes, okay, so a Sherlockian-style detective. But the attention to detail here is what impresses me. Because Skylar has a daisy, which is a flower that has no scent. Yeah, she uses it near the end of the short to clear her sense of smell from some blood they recently discovered. Because it's not just, oh, that's a cute little thing. They're making it look like she has a pipe, but she's not actually smoking. No, it's actually practical because anytime you have a heightened sense, you have a higher possibility of that sense being overwhelmed. Like when you have a really good sense of hearing, the last place you want to be is a loud concert. You know, you have a really strong sense of smell, you can get overwhelmed by the amount of data that is coming in. So it's just a really nice touch on the detail there. And from a technical standpoint, looking at it, I think I know the software they use. It's a software that Studio Ghibli actually used internally, and they recently released an open source version of this internal software. I've been playing around with it a little bit myself. I just don't have the time to really sit down and learn it, because I'm like, I see what you're doing here, and I want to do some stuff with you, but I know it's going to take a lot of watching YouTube tutorials, and I just don't have the time. And if I recall correctly, they do have a former Studio Ghibli member in their team. Also, I would love to see this as a Professor Layton style video game, especially something that could take and have a general story outline, like this is what the case is, but it changes based on your surroundings. So in order to do that, we'd really need it on the Switch or on mobile. Hmm. Though, what I'm also hoping is this gets enough interest for Netflix to look at it and actually give him enough money to do it as a full series, not just the possible six, I think, they have episodes for if they get enough stretch goals on the Kickstarter. I'm not sure how far they're going to make it because since this is a team that has a lot of experience in what they're doing, they have what is probably a very accurate budget. You could consider them very high dollar amounts. It's not like we're talking about the time when Kickstarter was really starting to get lots of big projects, like all the video games that got funded through their cough, my number nine cough. That was just unfortunate because NT Creates did not make it clear that they weren't actually going to make the game. And that was highly disappointing. Their beta was better than the final game. That still hurts very badly. These guys seem to know what they're doing. They're from an industry where they know how to set budgets. So they probably have a good idea of how much it's going to take them to make per episode. 
Especially considering that they already made the pilot. And the pilot looks excellent. And you could tell that they knew what they were doing, where they were going to spend the budget, and what they were going to focus on. Like, there were a couple of scenes I'm like, oh, that was done on the computer. That was like that was a 3D model. That was a 3D shot. That's something out of deep canvas Disney could have used. I recently learned about this technique that Disney used for a lot of their films like Tarzan and Treasure Planet called Deep Canvas which is they basically do a layout inside of the computer and then have their background artists paint inside the computer over these rough 3D models to make a really neat, deep, full motion panning shot and stuff like that actually into the backgrounds. This is why it's called deep canvas because you're going deep into these canvases of art. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I actually want to look further back to see if I can't find if they actually used it for films like Rescuers Down Under because there's this great shot at the beginning of the movie where they're just racing across the outback and you can tell it's a 3d shot but it was done inside the computer i'm just wondering if that was a test case for deep canvas entirely possible because rescuers down under is one of those instances where the sequel is better than the original but back to this short i was just going over the technology and how like oh this felt like a shot that could have been done in deep canvas and i'm really curious about the camera because the heightened sense of smell is entirely realistic, but the camera is entirely fanciful. So I'm really curious about the camera. Does it have to have film? Does it take a special kind of film? Do they have to actually pose like they're doing a selfie? You know, if they don't do the whole cheese and smile, does it not work? And did you notice that their expressions changed from before the shutter button was hit and after the shutter button was hit? That's kind of interesting. Like, hmm, does it actually change your expression? Because they had slightly different expressions and the shutter button was hit and their expressions completely changed. They were much more happier compared to the... <sighs> because they were about to be crushed by pieces of wood falling from the sky. And I also want to know if there's anything special about the photo that's left behind. Because they're gone, but there was a photo there in the rubble. Which looks like a Polaroid. Yes, because the physicality of the camera has a little bit in common with earlier Polaroids. It also reminded me a lot about the cameras that you would have to stand for a good minute or so in front of to get good enough exposure to actually imprint the light onto a film plate. Because <laughs> it had a little bit of that kind of accordion look at the front of it. But yeah, it also feels kind of like a Polaroid. It feels, it feels like a weird cross between modern and ancient. I'm going to have to look at it again sometime, probably when I'm looking up the references for the drawing that you're seeing on screen right now. Isn't it pretty? I have no idea. I haven't drawn it yet. <laughs> sometimes I draw before, sometimes I draw after. This one I'm going to draw after. Enjoy! Because <laughs> future me is going, oh god, I'm drawing it. Why does it have to take so long? Why won't the lines do what I want? All I want to do is draw a line. <laughs> Why is this character fighting me? Why don't you want to look pretty? Tell me! So the art style's really interesting. You have two very strong female characters. You have one done more traditionally feminine and one done slightly more masculine. But it's nice to see an anime-esque style show with female characters that are wearing something other than short skirts and bikinis and don't have cleavage up. Oh, cleavage would be down. Oh, that look like normally proportioned females. And they look like they could be very good strong leads. Because it's only six minutes, so we don't really have the strongest sense of their character yet. We have a little bit like the one who actually has the camera seems to have more of the happy-go-lucky personality compared to the Holmes character who seems a little bit more settled and a little bit more easily freaked out by stuff, even though she's also very analytical, so she may get more in her head more. Well, they're both very analytical, but Skylar relies mostly on her sense of smell, but Jamie is more straightforward analytically and uses visual clues to analyze the evidence in front of her. And you probably caught a lot more of the dialogue than I did because subtitles I can only read so fast. Because there was this whole scene where they were running, chasing this person, and they talked about a construction site and how, I'm just going to say, homes couldn't smell that far. Yeah, so they went, what's on the other side of that roof? A construction site? Yeah, oh, I guess you can't smell that way. Shortcut, this way. 
Also, interesting clues that we get as the audience when Holmes takes the first deep breath and lists off what she smells. The new jacket, the salmon. I don't remember now if it was new shoes or new hat. It was new shoes. So, new clothing. And then later in the episode, Skylar reveals that the thief was female. So, she had to go out and get this brand new men's clothing that would fit her properly in order to masquerade as male for the theft. Also, Skylar points out that this person is most likely from a fish market or the docks because of the fish smell. Well, Skylar says the fish smell, and then Jamie says she must have come from the harbor. It's a little hard to differentiate the dialogue at some point because both characters are actually played by the same voice actress. Oh, I didn't catch that. I thought they got more than one voice actress, but... Okay, thank you. No, at least in the pilot episode, both characters are played by the same voice actress. I don't know if they're going to expand those out into additional actors as the funding goes along, or if the same actor will be playing both characters throughout however many episodes they're able to produce. Because there can be a lot of variances between a pilot episode and subsequent episodes. But with a mystery, they have to at least have a basic outline planned, no matter else what else changes along the way. Also, I, I just remembered the name of the software. It's like Open Tunzai or something like that. I'll put a link to it in the description in case you're actually interested in the software as well. It's free at open source, so why not give it a shot? Unless you don't have time, but you know, you can still look at it and put it on your favorites for later. So anything else you want to go over? Because... There was a lot of details in the art overall, and it's so smooth. That's one of the reasons I was thinking they are using this software, because it has a lot of drawing and line assist built into it that the computer calculates in-betweens for you, so you don't have to hire someone just to sit there and draw the in-betweens. Because in-betweening is very time-consuming, but it's very necessary for smooth animation. And this was very smooth. They also did a lot of neat shots where you knew there were saving on budget but we're still well done like a lot of the close-ups of the person running away makes sense for keeping that person as a mystery but it also cuts down on animation budget because all they have to do is animate the bottom part of the mouth you know from the nose to the chin that's very cheap to animate compared to the shots they were doing before <laughs> with full body shots things flying everywhere characters all entire bodies reacting to things flying past them <laughs> So that's the thing, it's not only the overall smoothness and how great it looks, they knew where to make cuts. And still stylistically make it make sense for the shots they were using. So, in case you can't tell by the fact that we're still gushing, we really enjoyed this pilot and we hope that the Kickstarter goes successfully both in terms of funding and final production. We're not part of their team, we have nothing to do with them, we just thought it looked cool. And we thought we'd talk about it because why not? It's awesome animation. And we talk about animation all the time on this channel. And movies and pop culture. Hey, kind of combining things right here. Sherlock Holmes, books, movies, Japanese animation. Japanese style animation. Japanese style animation. Awesome. And I got to talk about technical stuff that I learned about and know about. That's our channel. <laughs> so shall we wrap things up with an outro? Yeah, so... This has been our thoughts on Lawsome Detective Holmes, pilot episode, Selfie with a Strange Intruder. You're still here? I thought you'd be delving through the multiple projects of Kickstarter because, you know, we put a link to one Kickstarter page and you go from one to the other, and next thing you know it's five hours later and you've gone down a rabbit hole. You can't stop at just one. Ah, <laughs> oh, but hey, thanks for staying here. So you guys have heard all this stuff before, so skipping all of that, thank you for watching and your continued support. If you enjoyed Blossom Detective Holmes, check out their Kickstarter page and do what you feel comfortable with. That goes the same for us. If you feel comfortable with us, we have avenues to take, well, accept your kind funds uh, in the form of commissions for Lux. Uh, support through Patreon, and direct donations by Coffee, all of which have links, all of which I'm sure you've heard before. So thanks again for listening.
And thank you to Lux's current patrons.